What is up guys, Logan here again. I'm finally back in front of the camera. I've been doing all the nightly watch lists. I've been having an absolute blast with it, trying to help you guys as much as I can. So I just wanted to thank you all for the support. Don't forget to leave a like, a subscribe, join the Discord, and then also we got the premium Discord where I give my call outs with Wolf Theta and a couple other awesome traders. So I just want to thank all you guys. I want to thank those people, the mods, everyone that's been making it a great place. And I just want to say pretty soon, you know how we have the free Discord? I'm going to do a one-time $5 fee for anybody who's never joined before. So if you're in it now, don't worry about it. But we've just had some issues recently with I get a lot of DMs now and I just can't babysit that way. And even though we have a lot of great mods, there's still trolls that come in. So just something to eliminate those trolls I think would help us a lot greatly. But I wanna hop into some put credit spreads this week and kind of what I've been monitoring as well. But my long-term portfolio has recovered very well from where we were all-time highs in September. And I've been making that money back slowly in options. So I've just been having a lot of fun with investing and you guys have been amazing. So let's get right into this video. Lately, I've been listening to Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. Now I read Rich Dad Poor Dad already, but this book's opening my mind even more than that one did. Um, and at the time, because that was the first financial book I ever read, it kind of sparked my interest and got me on the path. But this one's really opening my mind, so I think you guys should definitely check this out. He just talks about the EBSI quadrant, and he gets way more in-depth with it. So I think you guys would really like this uh, audiobook, and I think you guys should check it out. So this week, I scalped Beyond really quickly in the morning. It was a $40 four-minute scalp. So that was in Thinkorswim, and I've been starting to use Thinkorswim a little bit too. I like Robinhood a lot for options, but Thinkorswim's been really great. It fills stuff really quickly and you have unlimited day trades with a cash account with no matter how much money you have. So I've been able to move money from Robinhood and move money to Thinkorswim and vice versa. So it's been a really great app as well. So I highly recommend that. So that was one of the plays this week that I was really proud of. This was a week that I didn't take any losses, which is very uncommon, right? Because when you're a trader, everybody's hit stop losses. We have plays that don't work out and that's just part of the game. So I was really excited this week, and even though it wasn't an amazing, like, big, big gains week for me, I still think I did pretty well this week. So here is me messing with some SPY put credit spreads this week, and it's really fun. This is the first week I've jumped into playing these, and what I did this week was I bought a 323 put that expired on the 9th, and I bought that on Tuesday, and then I also sold a SPY 329 put that expired Friday as well. So I bought these on Tuesday, end up selling them Wednesday for a 93% gain. So the $13 buy on the put, the $40 sale, credited $25 because that was my 93% return because I saw an opportunity cost play to where this would have only made two more dollars, but I found one that went from Thursday into Friday and then it expired and when it did, I would make $10 on it. So there's an $8 opportunity cost difference and I talked about that a little bit on my nightly watch list on Thursday. And even though like $8, $9, $10, like small amounts like that aren't the biggest deal in the world, right? But for getting practice, seeing opportunity cost, and just entering a new position that literally expired the next day, it had a 90, I think it was 93% chance of profit. So with just the odds like that, stop losses set, I was like, okay, and we hopped into it, and I did get 100% return on the Thursday into Friday. So I was really excited. Even though it was only an extra $8, right? It was still really cool to play, and I had a lot of fun playing it. Okay, perfect. I did come across the spy call credit spread that I was playing, so I made $9 on it, so that's the exact amount. So I bought a spy 352 call for two cents, that expired that next day. So this was on Thursday I was buying and then I sold a 349 call for 11 cents. So as long as SPY didn't get above 349, I made 100% profit and it only took a little bit of collateral to make $9 in a day. So if you think about like, yeah, okay, Logan, that's only $9, but it was completely passive. I didn't have to do a single thing and I only put up a couple hundred in collateral with a next day expiration and got 100% return on the position. So that's what's really cool, right? So if you have the collateral and you can buy multiple contracts, like let's say you had 10 contracts 
and the collateral is 300, well you put 3,000 in collateral and then you make $90 completely passively by flipping it into the next day as long as SPY didn't rise above 349 by expiration. So that, I mean it got a little close, SPY closed at 347, but still like we have stop losses in place, the theta decay is crazy from Thursday into Friday on weeklies. I mean like it will just expire. So the only thing that can really mess with you is implied volatility. So just to be able to manage your risk that way. And then I just let them both expire and today my account was credited with that extra nine. So I was just really excited and I think playing them this week for the first time was fun. And I plan on my new goal to be if I could make $200 a week playing SPY credit spreads. I would be very excited. You know of course I'll manage my risk. I most likely won't win all the time at least 100% return, but you can always close positions early. So if you're up 50%, 75% or whatever, you can get out then. So that's just something to keep in mind and something to continue to watch because I have an absolute blast doing this and it would be so much fun to make maybe $300 a week playing options between day trades, swing plays, and that, and then $200 a week completely passively doing spy spreads or QQQ spreads. So I'm really excited to continue on this path and this journey with it and I've just been having a blast with it. And I'm happy to see DPST's recovering a little bit since the pullback so that's something that's great to see as well. Up 18% this past week. Like I said, it got down to $38 September 23rd and now it's back up to 62 and this is my current position. I'm up 1100 on this time around with 124 shares so this is my market value. My average cost of 51.54, it's 31% of my portfolio right now. So DPST, it's a great stock and I would love to honestly free up some capital out of it soon just so I can have more money to play credit spreads with in this same account, even though this is one of my more longer term positions, but I think it'd be cool you know, to be able to make that money on the side and then roll it back into DPST when it dips like it did here on September 23rd buy more, write it up to 60, and you're already up a ridiculous amount. I think that's nearly a 50% return, if not more. But even if you bought it at the beginning of the week at 52, wrote it up to 63 at its all-time high for the week, right, for its weekly high, that's something too. You know, you can make a quick 22, 25% on your money, and that's, dude, you can't beat that in a bank or with interest rates cut. So that's what I really like about DPST. That's why I have so much into it and it can shoot up 10% a day, but it can also drop 3%. You know, like it opened up at 64, right it opened, sold off immediately down to 63.30, sold all the way down to 59, back up to 62, and then ended the day down at 60 because tech was really strong. And it seems like to me when tech is strong, the banks aren't as strong. So that's something to keep in mind as well for the day, you know, when you're trading that day. And then I also want to briefly touch on my new addition for the $200 a week dividend challenge. So I grabbed four shares of Coca-Cola. I've always just wanted to own their stock just a little bit. I think it would be really fun. They pay a dividend and I think it's my inner Warren Buffett that just wants me to hold this. I've always just watched Coca-Cola and I know it doesn't move very much anymore. I mean this is the five year chart. But it pays a dividend, it's really nice, and I like Coca-Cola, they're really consistent. They're coming out with an alcoholic beverage soon, so I think that's gonna do really well in the marketplace. And I just grabbed four shares, cause $200 a week in a dividend stocks, that's 800 a month, nearly $10,000 a year. And I know, you know, I'm 20 now, and I know that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, like over the next couple of decades, all of these shares that I pick up every week on these companies that I believe in for the long term, are gonna pay off really well. So that's something that you guys should definitely think about too when starting your own dividend challenges or when buying dividend stocks, whether you buy growth dividend stocks, like I was buying Apple, or if you buy stocks with decent yields, like at and T's a really nice one as well. So this is my new Coca-Cola position. I know it's not too crazy, like it's four shares, but I'm doing $200 a week so that I can have money to trade with, have collateral for options, and still add to my long-term portfolio, right? I think that's the trifecta for investing and you can really build wealth fast that way with proper risk management and buying good companies. But that's gonna be everything for me today. I really appreciate you guys watching all the way through. This means a lot. 
Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe, join the discords. There's so much cool stuff that's happening and this is the most confident I've ever been with my plays in my entire life. Even though the market's very volatile, I understand risk management better than I ever have and I think everybody else around me is too and that's just where success is created. And I just like to hear you guys' success stories, seeing community gains, seeing people in plays where they're up, even if it's just $5, 15 50 500 like everybody's got a different mindset when it comes to wealth and what's a lot, what isn't, because everyone lives different lives. So I think that's really important to take into consideration. But if you guys want to check out my music, I'll link that below. My Instagram is linked below as well. But that's gonna be it for me today. Make sure you check out the Rich Dad Poor Dad book and any of the Robert Kiyosaki, you know, and I'm reading the Cash Flow Quadrant right now. So make sure you check those out. But that's gonna be everything for me today and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and rest of your weekend. So let's get back at it on Monday and I will see you guys in the next video which will probably be a nightly watch list. So let's get back at it. Uh, keep your heads up, any investors, I know a lot of people have been maybe losing money through that pullback, but there's so much to be made in the long term in this stuff that it's literally ridiculous. So make sure you just do what you're comfortable with and you will build good wealth. So I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.